Hey guys, John Marks, 2210.com, where we talk watches and all things time. Today on episode two of Throwback Thursdays, I'm gonna be talking about the Omega Speedmaster Professional and my six favorite facts about its 1969 involvement with NASA and putting the first man and watch on the moon. Okay, so we start, fact number one. Neil Armstrong did not wear an Omega Speedmaster when he took his first steps on the moon. In fact, he didn't wear a watch at all. In 1969, when the Apollo 11 was uh, going to land on the moon, they were having massive issues with the uh, timer uh, function in the module. Uh, here's the way that about. And so to avoid any potential of them being left without any timing device at all, Neil Armstrong took his watch off and left it in for safekeeping in the um, Apollo 11 and uh, Buzz Aldrin actually took, strapped it on with a big vel uh, Velcro strap around his spacesuit and took it for its first uh, maiden steps on the moon. So Buzz Aldrin gets all the good Omega contracts these days because he was the first person to wear a Omega Speedmaster and therefore any watch on the moon. Fact number two, what time do you set your watch to when you're running around on the moon? Houston time. Mission Control Center, Houston, Texas is the time zone that all the Speedmasters on the Apollo 11 um, were synchronized to, and that is UTC minus six. Fact number three, the Omega Speedmaster was the first watch on the moon, but it was not the first watch in space. That title goes to Yuri Gagarin in 1961 and his um, space travels. He was wearing a Russian-made Stumansky. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but that's how you spell it there. Funnily enough, uh, this watch never really got as much um, press and everything as, as the uh, Speedmaster has. So it's sort of faded into a bit of obscurity and you can pick these things up for just next to nothing these days. But first watch in space. Number four is a crazy one. After all NASA missions, the astronauts need to hand back all their equipment, which includes their watches. That all happened, but in 1971, when they were transporting um, Buzz Aldrin's watch to the Smithsonian Museum, during that whole process, it, uh, it actually went AWOL. So to this day, Buzz Aldrin's moon watch, the uh, Ref ST105.012, is actually missing. So if you know where it is, let me know. I'm sure we could do a story on it. Fact five, why is the Omega Speedmaster a manual wind? It's because when they were going through the testing and setting the parameters for um, what a moon watch needed to be, this is NASA, they um, stipulated that it had to be manual wind because at that time they weren't sure whether an automatic rotor would actually spin and power the watch in space. So they, uh, they said it stipulated that it needed to be manual wind and today we know that a automatic watch does actually work in space. Fact number six and the last one for today is actually how NASA chose upon the Omega Speedmaster Professional to be their certified moon watch. Story goes that in 1962, I think it was, um, NASA, they released a set of design specifications to around 10 manufacturers. Only four watches um, were returned to NASA that, that said that they could meet these specifications. The first one was uh, Hamilton, which was discounted early because it wasn't actually um, designed specifically for the wrist, I believe. There was three others that came back, obviously the Omega Speedmaster Professional, the Rolex uh, Cosmograph of the time, and the Longines Wittenauer 235T. And as we all know, and like Omega like to tell us, is that the only one to pass the test was obviously the Omega Speedmaster Professional, and then, therefore it was certified by NASA for all their flight missions, and, and still is today, and, and yeah, the rest is history. Thanks so much for watching episode two of Throwback Thursdays, where we throw back to times of horological significance. Don't forget to check us out at 2210.com for latest news, reviews, events, competitions, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and if you liked it, subscribe. We'll make some more if, uh, if, if people are into it. Until next time, guys, 2210.com.